ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम लालेमा अनेजा डैंग एंड विद मी इज सुभद्रा रामाचंद्रन द हेडलाइंस Prime Minister Narendra Modi to attend two-day virtual BRICS summit being hosted by China beginning today. India expects 7.5% economic growth rate this year says Prime Minister at the BRICS business forum meeting. Commerce and Industry Ministry's new premises Vanijya Bhavan to be inaugurated by Prime Minister this morning to also launch Niryat portal for information related to India's foreign trade. ISRO successfully launches India's communication satellite GSAT-24 from Kourou in French Guiana. Janata Dal United extends support to NDA presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu. Voting underway for by-elections to three Lok Sabha and seven Assembly seats. Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre offers to resign as more Shiv Sena MLAs join rebel leader Eknath Shinde's camp. In Afghanistan, deadliest earthquake in decades claims over 1000 lives. Prime Minister Modi says India stands by people of Afghanistan in their difficult times. JEE main examination for June 2022 session commences today. Common University entrance test for undergraduate programs to be conducted from 15 July to 10th August and Indian women's hockey team defeat, defeats United States 4-0 to finish third in debut FIH Pro League in Netherlands. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will attend the two-day 14th BRICS summit hosted by China beginning today. The summit will be held in virtual format under the theme of Foster High Quality BRICS Partnership, Usher in a New Era for Global Development. The BRICS group comprises Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Chinese President Xi Jinping will also chair a high-level dialogue on global development with guest countries tomorrow. BRICS leaders and leaders of relevant emerging markets and developing countries will attend a high-level dialogue on global development. The Ministry of External Affairs said BRICS has become a platform for discussing and deliberating on issues of common concern for all developing countries. BRICS countries have regularly called for reform of the multilateral system in order to make it more representative and inclusive. During the 14th BRICS summit, deliberations are expected to be held in areas like terrorism, trade, health, traditional medicine, environment, science and technology, innovation, agriculture, technical and vocational education and training and micro, small and medium enterprises. Discussions are also likely to be held on issues like reform of the multilateral system, combating COVID-19 pandemic and global economic recovery. Prime Minister has said the government is expecting the Indian economy to grow by 7.5% this year. In a virtual address at the BRICS Business Forum meeting last evening, the Prime Minister highlighted the strength of the Indian economy. He said the value of the Indian digital economy will reach 1 trillion dollar by 2025. He said there is an opportunity to invest 1.5 trillion dollar under the country's national infrastructure pipeline. फ्रेंड्स महामारी से उत्पन्न आर्थिक समस्याओं से निपटने के लिए हमने भारत में रिफॉर्म परफॉर्म एंड ट्रांसफॉर्म का मंत्र अपनाया है और इस अप्रोच के परिणाम भारतीय अर्थव्यवस्था के परफॉर्मेंस से स्पष्ट है इस साल हम 7.5 परसेंट ग्रोथ की आशा कर रहे हैं जो हमें फास्टेस्ट ग्रोइंग मेजर इकोनॉमी बनाता है उभरते हुए न्यू इंडिया में हर सेक्टर में ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव बदलाव हो रहे हैं द प्राइम मिनिस्टर एडर दट इंडिया सक्सेस इज बेस्ड ऑन टेक्नोलॉजी लेड ग्रोथ विद इनोवेशन एंड स्टार्टअप इवन ड्यूरिंग कोविड नाइन्टीन भारत की वर्तमान इकोनॉमिक रिकवरी का एक प्रमुख स्तंभ टेक्नोलॉजी लेड ग्रोथ है हम हर सेक्टर में इनोवेशन को सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं हमने स्पेस ब्लू इकोनॉमी ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन क्लीन एनर्जी ड्रोन्स 
जियो स्पेशल डेटा जैसे कई क्षेत्रों में इनोवेशन फ्रेंडली पॉलिसी बनाई है आज भारत में इनोवेशन के लिए विश्व में सबसे उत्तम इको सिस्टम है जो भारतीय स्टार्टअप की बढ़ती संख्या में दिखता है भारत के सत्तर हजार से अधिक स्टार्टअप में सौ से अधिक यूनिकॉर्न है और इनकी संख्या निरंतर बढ़ रही है Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the new premises of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry Vanijya Bhavan at 10:30 a.m. today. During the program, Mr. Modi will also launch a new portal, Niryat, National Import Export Record for Yearly Analysis of Trade, which is developed as a one-stop platform for stakeholders to get all the necessary information related to India's foreign trade. The Prime Minister will also address the gathering on the occasion. We have more from our correspondent. Constructed near India Gate, the Bani Jevhavan is designed as a smart building. It incorporates the principles of sustainable architecture with a special focus on energy saving. It will serve as an integrated and modern office complex. Bani Jevhavan will be used by the two departments under the Ministry, Department of Commerce and Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade (DPIIT). Anupam Mish, AR News, Delhi. Talking to AIR News, Union Minister of State for Commerce and Industry Som Prakash enumerated the facilities that will be available at Vanijya Bhavan. उद्घाटन प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र भाई मोदी जी कर रहे हैं बहुत अच्छी बिल्डिंग बनी है जिसमें सभी सुविधाएं हैं और इसके ध्यान में इसके रखकर बनाई गई है कि सभी की एफिशिएंसी बढ़े और बहुत खूबसूरत बिल्डिंग बनी है और बड़ा अच्छा व्यू है सभी एक छत के नीचे इंडस्ट्री और कमर्स के सारे ऑफिसर बैठेंगे और एक्सपोर्टर्स के लिए सभी के लिए बहुत फायदा होगा इससे एफिशियंसी भी बढ़ेगी और काम में तेजी आएगी एक्सपोर्ट बढ़ेगा एक्सपोर्टर्स को भी सभी सुविधाएं मिलेंगी यहाँ पर Indian Space Research Organization ISRO has successfully launched communication satellite GSAT-24 from Kourou in French Guiana early this morning. GSAT-24 built by ISRO for New Space India Limited NSIL was launched by French company Arian Space. GSAT-24 is a 24 ku band communication satellite weighing 4180 kg with pan India coverage for meeting DTH application needs. It was the first demand driven communication satellite mission undertaken by NSIL post space sector reforms NSIL a government of India company under the department of space has leased the entire satellite capacity to Tata Play Janata Dal United has extended its support to the NDA presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu making the announcement party national president Rajiv Ranjan Singh said Janata Dal United welcomes and supports the candidature of Draupadi Murmu expressing happiness over the announcement of Ms Murmu as the NDA's presidential candidate Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar said selection of a tribal woman as candidate for the country's highest post is a matter of great happiness Mr Kumar thanked Prime Minister Narendra Modi for selecting a tribal woman who has proven her mettle as a minister in Odisha and also during her gubernatorial stint in Jharkhand. President of Lok Janashakti Party Ram Vilas Chirag Paswan also extended his party's full support to the NDA's presidential candidate while RJD has announced its support to the opposition candidate Yashwant Sinha. Voting is underway for by-elections to 3 Lok Sabha and 7 Assembly seats. These seats are spread over Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Tripura, Andhra Pradesh, Jharkhand and Delhi. By polls for the Sangrur Lok Sabha seat in Punjab are necessitated following the resignation of Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Mann after winning the assembly election from Dhuri constituency earlier this year. Polling is being held for two Lok Sabha seats in Uttar Pradesh while the Rampur seat fell vacant after Azam Khan won the elections from the Rampur assembly seat Samajwadi Party chief Akhilesh Yadav won the Karhal assembly seat leaving the Azamgarh seat vacant in Delhi Rajendra Nagar assembly seat fell vacant after AAP MLA Raghav Chadha got elected to Rajya Sabha last month In Tripura voting is taking place of four assembly seats Borodwali town Agartala Surma and Jubraj Nagar In Andhra Pradesh Atmkur assembly seat was vacated by the sudden demise of YSR Congress MLA Mekapati Gautam Reddy in February this year 
in Jharkhand, Mandar Assembly constituency fell vacant after Bhandu Tirki, who had won the seat in 2019, was disqualified following his conviction in a disproportionate assets case. The counting of votes will be taken up on 26th of June. Haryana State Election Commission has declared the results of the election of chairman to 28 municipalities and 18 municipal councils. State Election Commissioner Dr. Dhanpat Singh said in the election to 18 municipal councils, BJP won 10 seats, Jannayak Janta Party, JJP and Indian National Lokdal got one seat each, while six seats have gone to independents. State Election Commissioner further informed that in the elections of Chairman of 28 municipalities, BJP has won 12, AAP got 1, JJP back 2, Independents 13 seats. Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre has offered to resign as more Shiv Sena MLAs have joined rebel leader Ignath Shinde's camp. Four more MLAs, including two from Shiv Sena and two Independent, have reportedly joined the Shinde's camp in Guwahati. Earlier yesterday, 40 Shiv Sena legislators were, was claimed to have reached Guwahati from Surat by Mr. Shinde. The Maharashtra Chief Minister has offered to make way for another Shiv Sena leader to become Chief Minister. However, it appeared to have made little impact on the rebels. Mr. Thakre also vacated the official residence of Chief Minister Varsha and returned to Matashri, his family residence. You are listening to the Morning News and All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to attend two-day virtual BRICS summit being hosted by China beginning today. India expects 7.5% economic growth rate this year, says Prime Minister at the BRICS Business Forum meeting. Commerce and Industry Ministry's new premises, Vanijya Bhavan, to be inaugurated by Prime Minister this morning. To also launch Niryat portal for information related to India's foreign trade. ISRO successfully launches India's communication satellite GSAT-24 from Kuru in French Guyana. Janata Dal United extends support to NDA presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu. Voting underway for by-elections to three Lok Sabha and seven Assembly seats. Maharashtra Chief Minister Udhav Thakri offers to resign as more Shiv Sena MLAs join rebel leader Eknath Shinde's camp. In Afghanistan, deadliest earthquake in decades claims over 1,000 lives. Prime Minister Modi says India stands by people of Afghanistan in their difficult times. JEE main examination for June 2022 session commences today. Common university entrance tests for undergraduate programs to be conducted from 15 July to 10th August. And Indian women's hockey team defeats United States 4-0 to finish third in WFIH Pro League in Netherlands. For quick news updates, round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. कंपटीशन के अगर आप कर रहे हैं तैयारी तो उनके लिए ऑल इंडिया रेडियो पर हम लाए हैं अभ्यास एक ऐसा कार्यक्रम जिसमें आप पूछेंगे सवाल व्हाट्सएप नंबर 9289094044 पर या फिर ईमेल करेंगे abhyas.airnews@gmail.com पर और हमारे विशेषज्ञ देंगे इसका जवाब आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों आरोप विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो the Taliban in Afghanistan have appealed for international support as the country deals with the aftermath of a devastating 6.1 magnitude earthquake. More than 1,000 people have died and at least 1,500 were injured in one of the deadliest tremors in decades. But Kitika province in the southeast region has been the most affected. Rescue efforts are being hampered by heavy rain and hail. The deadliest earthquake to strike the country in two decades is a major challenge for the Taliban, which regained power last year. The earthquake struck about 44 kilometers from the city of Khost yesterday, and tremors were felt as far away as Pakistan and India. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed sadness on the news of the devastating earthquake in Afghanistan. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said, India stands by the people of Afghanistan in their difficult times and is ready to provide all possible disaster relief material at the earliest. In Assam, the flood situation continues to remain grim despite slight improvement in Brahmaputra Valley due to better weather conditions. The situation remains critical in the three districts of Barak Valley. Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma will visit flood-affected areas of Silchar and Barak Valley today. Twelve people lost their lives due to flood in the state during the last 24 hours. Here's more from our correspondent. The ongoing second spate of floods in the Barak Valley has now submerged the whole city of Shilchar within a high velocity flood water stream getting continuously flown out of the river Barak. Water level inside the city is now varying up to 8 feet in height and increasing while the water level of Barak River at Annapurna Ghat is decreasing as river water is freely coming inside the city from multiple points. All the roads of the city have turned into waterways. Dead bodies cannot be cremated as the burning huts and burial grounds are all under water. Water logging in all the roads has also led to the collapse of the medical facilities as nobody can approach those without playing boats through the city roads. Shashwati Bhattacharji, Air News, Shilchar. In Uttar Pradesh, 10 people died while 7 others injured in a road accident in Pili Beach district during the wee hours today. The incident took place when a jeep carrying devotees from Haridwar collided with a tree near Gajrola on National Highway 730. In another accident, 6 people died in Hamirpur district of the state yesterday evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed grief and sorrow over the incident. The Joint Entrance Examination, JEE, main for the June 2022 session will commence today. The National Testing Agency is conducting the G-Main exam at different centers located in 501 cities throughout the country and in 22 cities outside India on 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th and 29th of this month. The National Testing Agency will also be conducting the Common University Entrance Test Undergraduate CUETUG this year at different centers located in 554 cities across India and in 13 cities outside India. The CUETUG will be spread over 10 days starting from 15th of July. It will also be held on 15th, 16th, 19th, 20th of July and 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th and 10th of August through computer-based test mode. Over 11 lakh candidates have registered for the first edition of CUET for admissions to undergraduate courses in 2022-2023 academic session. In March, University Grants Commission Chairman Jagdish Kumar had announced that CUET scores would be mandatory for admission to 45 central universities and that the central universities can fix their minimum eligibility criteria. Talking to AIR News, educationist Dr. Sant Kumar Chaudhary said CUET UG examination will prove advantages for the students. Central University entrance test date has been announced. It's a great support for the student that NTA has made number of uh, centers for this examination, not only in our country, but abroad also. So this uh, a student who is going to appear for this Central University entrance test will be very comfortable to appear for this examination. And it's a very useful for those uh, students who are meritorious, will give Get opportunity to get admission in a good university, central university. The News Services Division of All India Radio will bring an exclusive interview with Executive Director of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, Dr. Surjit Bhalla, at 9.30 tonight. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu released a book, Modi at 20, Dreams Meet Delivery, last month. The book is a compilation of 21 articles by 22 domain experts bringing out various aspects of thinking and performance of the Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, in various domains as Chief Minister of Gujarat and later as Prime Minister of India. Dr. Bhalla, who has contributed a chapter, Success of People-Centric Approach, in the book, narrated themes of his chapter with AIR News. 
The first and the most important point is that PM Modi, as well as Chief Minister Modi, was directly concerned with the welfare of the poor or the bottom 50, 60, 70 percent. So the poor is a very broad, it's not the absolute poor, but it is those who belong to the lower strata of society. Now, he is the first leader in independent India to concentrate on this share of the population. Here we have, we are concentrating on delivering to the poor and the poor are not getting the money. This interview can be heard on FM Gold channel and additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. onwards. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi ka safar with AIR News. Birth of a nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. We remember the nationalist leader Shama Prasad Mukherjee on his death anniversary. Shama Prasad Mukherjee began his public career as the Vice Chancellor of Calcutta University in 1934. He was the youngest Vice Chancellor of Calcutta University. He was the architect of the coalition of the Nationalist Party and the Krishak Praja Party, which ousted the Muslim League from power in 1940 and gave the United Bengal a spell of nationalist government. He became the first. However, he resigned in 1942 from the ministry to raise voice against Viceroy Linlitko, who had let loose a reign of terror in the wake of the Quit India movement. Since all the top Congress leaders had been put in prisons, it fell on Shama Prasad Mukherjee to act as the spokesman of the nationalist India in those difficult days. His services to the suffering humanity of Bengal in the man-made famine of 1943 brought him on the national stage and endeared him to the whole country. He was elected as a member of the Constituent Assembly of India in 1946. The then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru inducted Mukherjee into the interim central government as a minister for industry and supply on the 15th of August 1947. Shama Prasad Mukherjee resigned along with K.C. Niyogi from the cabinet on the 8th of April 1950 over a disagreement with the government. Later, he founded the Bharatiya Janasangh on the 21st of October 1951 in Delhi, becoming its first president. In 1953, Shama Prasad Mukherjee went to visit Kashmir and observed a hunger strike to protest the law that prohibited Indian citizens from settling within the state. But because of the prevailing permit system, he was not given permission. He was arrested on 11th of May at Lakhanpur while crossing the border into Kashmir. He was not in good health. He fell seriously ill in prison and died a martyr's death to the cause of Indian unity on 23rd of June 1953. In the Lok Sabha, mourning the unexpected demise of Dr. Shyama Prasad Mukherjee, the then speaker, G.V. Mavalankar observed, His ability, sincerity, the masterly manner of handling his subject, his eloquence and above all his patriotism and love for his countrymen entitled him to our respect. AIR News salutes the brave son of the soil. We remember Mata Jhumman Lal who was a resident of Manpuri, Uttar Pradesh. He was a Jamadar with the contingent guards of the Agra Central Prison. 
During the first war of independence of 1857, he escaped with his arms on 23rd of June 1857 to join hands with the rebel forces. He moved towards Delhi with other rebels to fight against the British there. The brave son of the soil, Jhumman Lal, was killed in 1857 in an encounter with the British army. AIR News salutes the brave son of the soil. We also remember freedom fighter Phula Singh. Phula Singh was serving the English East India Company Army but left his service during the first war of independence of 1857 and fought against the British. He also motivated his fellow sepoys to turn their arms on the British officials and overthrow the oppressive foreign rule. Phula Singh was captured in an encounter with the company troops and charged with desertion and mutiny against the British authorities. He was sentenced to the transportation for life with hard labor in irons and was sent to the Andaman Islands. Phula Singh died there in detention on the 23rd of June 1859. AIR News salutes the brave son of the soil. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. US President Joe Biden has called on Congress to suspend federal gasoline and diesel taxes for 3 months in response to the country's soaring energy prices. If the gas savings were fully passed along to consumers, people would save roughly 3.6% at the pump when prices are averaging about $5 a gallon nationwide. The White House in its fact sheet stated that at present the federal government charges an 18% tax per gallon of gasoline and a 24% tax per gallon of diesel. The Indian women's hockey team produced a dominating performance to defeat United States 4-0, finishing on a creditable third position in its debut season at the FIH Pro League in Rotterdam and Netherlands. The victory follows brilliant performance by the Indian side which beat United States 4-2 in the first match. Argentina have already won the title with Netherlands finishing second. The win will boost India's confidence ahead of the Women's World Cup to be co-hosted by the Netherlands and Spain from 1st to 17th of July. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for today. National capital Delhi will have strong surface winds during daytime. Minimum temperature was 24 and maximum will be 38 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. Chennai will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Kolkata will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Srinagar and Jammu will have mainly clear sky. Leh partly cloudy sky and Gilgit also partly cloudy sky. Muzaffarabad will have clear sky. Guwahati and Imphal will have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. Agartala will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain. Kohima, Shillong, Aizawl and Itanagar will have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Biggest quake in decades kills 1000 in Afghanistan is in Hindustan Times headline. The Business Standard reports that it's busy season for Indian producers of orthodox tea as Sri Lanka is in a grip of economic crisis. The statesman reports of Dr. Him Chatterjee of a Himachal Pradesh University professor who has created world's longest Out, outdoor mural at the integrated transit corridor in Pragati Maidan in Delhi a wood without wood to save forests is a story in the hindu business line talking about a startup in chennai that has been making composite board from agricultural husk 3000 tons being produced annually and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Prime Minister Narendra Modi to attend two day virtual BRICS summit being hosted by China beginning today India expects 7.5% economic growth rate this year says Prime Minister at the BRICS business forum meeting Commerce and Industry Ministry's new premises Vanijya Bhavan to be inaugurated by Prime Minister this morning to also launch Niryat portal for information related to India's foreign trade ISRO successfully launches India's communications satellite GSAT-24 from Kourou in French Guiana Janata Dal United extends support to NDA presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu. Voting underway for by-elections to three Lok Sabha and seven Assembly seats. 
Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre offers to resign as more Shiv Sena MLAs join rebel leader Eknath Shinde's camp. In Afghanistan, deadliest earthquake in decades claims over a thousand lives. Prime Minister Modi says India stands by people of Afghanistan in their difficult times. JEE main examination for June 2022 session commences today. Common university entrance test for undergraduate programs to be conducted from 15 July to 10th August. And Indian women's hockey team defeats United States 4-0 to finish third in debut FIH Pro League in Netherlands. And with that we end the morning news. Have a nice day.